I wish someone had warned me, so I'm warning you. Welcome back to my channel, I'm Carolyn. As many of you know, I am a student at Oregon State University and I am actually in my final term, meaning I will be completely done with college in March. Yeah, March, I'm gonna be completely done and then I graduate in the spring, obviously. So I thought as a beaver of approximately only one year, I'll get into that in a bit. I thought I would come on here and just give you some things that I wish I knew before becoming an OSU beaver. Just some stuff I think might be very helpful for future students or just interested students kind of have questions that can't be answered by like the general web website obviously just like maybe how the town is and what the nightlife is like and what classes are like I guess so I thought I would just cover a broad area of information that can hopefully be helpful to you going back to what I said about being a beaver for only one year to give you a background on like my education I guess you can say I transferred to Oregon State from California so I'm not a local at all so all the information about things outside of OSU is kind of just like like from the perspective of a non-local, if that makes sense. So I'm not gonna know everything. I, I'm just gonna tell you what I know and what I think could help you. But yeah, let me just get straight into it and I will try to like give you as much advice as I can. All right, let's see. I wrote some stuff down in my notes so I didn't forget. Okay, starting off with the most tedious thing about going to OSU. There's another college in this state and it's also very big. It's gonna be University of Oregon. The thing about this is that literally every time I tell anyone that I got like accepted into OSU or I like I'm at OSU right now, they always assume I'm talking about University of Oregon, which is incorrect. That college is in Eugene. OSU, Oregon State University, is in Corvallis. So just right off the bat, in case you clicked on here thinking this was going to be for University of Oregon, it's not. This is for Oregon State University. Yeah, it's a very easy mistake and it's a very frequent mistake. So those are two separate ones. One's a university, one's a state college. Get ready for that confusion anytime you tell people that you go to Oregon State. Some like minor background about Oregon State University is that it is a quarter system, meaning each quarter is gonna be 10 weeks compared to like a semester system that some other colleges had. That's what I had at my previous college. That's gonna be like 16 weeks, I believe. And there's only two semesters compared to three quarters. I love the quarter system. I feel like I prefer to learn things at a fast pace. So 10 weeks is just like a perfect pace for me. But I would consider that if you don't enjoy like really fast paced material because then maybe you'd be better off considering a semester system but you know to each their own i love the quarter system i don't think i'm going to touch base on a lot of academic things only because i'm not an advisor i can't really help you out there i will say though the osu website is very very helpful i'm not gonna know what requirements your major is gonna have but go on the website there should be like a majors tab click on the majors tab and then it'll usually lead you to like a requirements page and you can see what is required when you transfer or when you come in from high school like what classes are expecting from you also if you're like curious about what courses you might need to take when you finally like get into the major you want. There's also like a list of classes there. But yeah, all that can be found on the website. So check it out, it's very resourceful. Another thing I got asked a lot was living situation. I got a lot of dorm questions or like just apartment questions, like advice on that. And like I said, I didn't dorm, so I literally have zero information on that. I don't know if it's like required as a freshman because I didn't come as a freshman. I transferred my junior year, so not sure. I literally had never been to Oregon. I had to just find an apartment on apartments.com. I just compared a bunch of different apartment complexes. The major advice I have is know what you want from an apartment. That way it helps you during your search. So for example, I needed it to be pet friendly because I have a cat. I really wanted um, a unit washer dryer. So if that's important to you, make sure they have that. I kind of wanted it close to campus. So yeah, like just have a list of things you need. That way you're 
search is a little easier. I have a budget, obviously. I do know there are student housing options, like or like student apartments. I think there's one called the Domain. One's called the Sierra. I think I would do more research on that. I think it can be found on the OSU website. But essentially, those apartments are basically like. They're just like mini apartments for students depending on the like setup you want you can have like various numbers of roommates obviously depending on the rent you want to pay you basically pay for like a bedroom and that and then you have like a shared kitchen and stuff shared living area so everyone has just their own room if that makes sense like that that's like the premise of it i've been to them a couple times to hang out with friends that live there pretty neat like i've been to the domain a couple times and it's very nice so in case you're interested i would look into that that way if you have like no roommates you know or friends you know and you're like oh i'm coming in don't know what to do at least you'd be in a community of students you know so that's a very good option going into some hardcore advice just because i learned this the hard way and i would hate for anyone else to have to learn it the hard way i guess just learn from my mistakes like that's all i can say this really bummed me out so hope it helps you um advisors i don't want to say that advisors aren't good because i've had amazing advisors at osu and i've had not so great and i've had this exact same experience at my previous college that i transferred from so um right off the bat be your own advisor like i guess take what advisors say with the hint of salt is that what the saying is i don't remember but the number of times advisors have messed me up up and caused me to stay an additional year. So it happened once um, at my previous college. Basically, my advisors had me taking classes I didn't even need to take to transfer. It wasted me an entire year. So um, I'm actually on my fifth year of college right now, but like I said, almost done. So I'm not mad. Um, and then at OSU, I just had an advisor that was not helpful. Like I would have a plan set out and you would go and you know, be like, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. But don't, I, I'm not going to say don't listen to them, like consider their advice, but always, always like know what you want to do. Cause obviously they're not going to know what you want to do. They have to take care of so many students. So it's like, they're trying to help you with from the best of their ability, but it's like, I'm emphasizing this so much you need to do it yourself. Um, like I said, there's a list of required classes and with that list of required classes, it'll tell you what quarter they're offered. So whether it be a fall, winter, spring, or summer, from the first year you're there, I would be setting out classes for each Quarter. Like I literally did that because it's gonna help you so much in the long run I kid you not the amount of students I talk to that are like, uh, I'm a year behind because of my advisor or my advisor messed me up I was supposed to take this class last quarter, but they told me to take it next year But I should have taken the last quarter like just make up your own plan talk to your advisor about it Just in case there are like complications and they remind you like oh you actually can't take this class until you finish this class You know in that sense It's important to listen and be like oh shoot I need to take this class So that's what I did coming into OSU. So obviously learned from my previous mistakes at my previous college and there are advisor meetings you go to so they will help you out but be ready just have a list of classes you want to take every quarter run it through with your advisor be like all these classes are okay there's nothing there's not a requirement holding me back from taking any of these future classes you know so i kind of just hope and pray that you get a good advisor honestly it's a nightmare when you have one that ruins your schedule but yeah i think that's like all i have to say on that i wish someone had warned me so i'm warning you Hmm, let's see, what's next? Okay, if you consider driving to OSU, then you also have to consider parking. And this is something I didn't realize was a thing here at OSU, just because parking at colleges in California was a bit different. At least the colleges I went to, I don't know if there are different parking situations at different colleges, but in the past that the colleges in California I'd been to, parking was a free for all, if that makes sense. Like you pay an amount for a parking pass and you just hope to find parking. Like you can park at any of the lots, if that makes sense. Coming to OSU, I didn't realize that there were different parking lots, which is so strange. Like okay i guess that doesn't really make sense there's different parking passes different parking passes for different parking lots within the campus which i thought was very odd like even though i had a parking pass if i parked in a wrong area i would get a ticket it's never happened to me only because i did research on it prior to it something to consider you have to find parking obviously next to your classes because you don't want to park on one side of campus and your class be on the other side because i did that <laughs> so i'd have to walk approximately like 15 minutes from the parking lot to my class again you 
can find this on the OSU website, but there's A lots, B lots, and C lots. And then like within A, B, and C, there's like A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, I believe, unless C is just C, I don't remember. <laughs> I've never had that parking pass. Here's a really good tip in case you get lucky like I did this quarter. I'm not sure if this is every single neighborhood around OSU, but across Monroe, which is just a street that is like right next to campus that has like a bunch of food. It has some bars also just on the other side of Monroe. Within that neighborhood, there's two hour parking. So lucky for me, my class this quarter is literally on Monroe, if that makes sense. Like there's an entire campus, but luckily my building is right next to the street. So I'm very fortunate to get that free neighborhood parking for two hours because I literally just go to class for an hour. It's like a three minute walk. So I'm very, very happy. <laughs> but yeah, just like a little advice if you have a class that's not too far from that neighborhood and if you're on campus for literally less than two hours it's a very good option so yeah keep that in mind if you uh, don't want to pay for parking <laughs> Next up, let's talk sports. I'm gonna be completely honest. I have only been to one football game. I literally made this shirt for the football game because I had zero OSU merch. I only went to one, but what I do have to say is if you do like sports, there are a lot of sports. Like people go to soccer games, uh, football games, I think baseball games. Yeah, so if you're like very much school spirit and you like sports, football's your thing, I think you're gonna have a lot of fun because I didn't know this coming to OSU. I guess I should have known this or at least thought about it but osu students get to go to the football games for free and there's like a little student area too so you're like with all the like students like just hanging out yeah and you can bring guests as well like i think i brought my friend for like 30 dollars if i'm wrong it might be like might have been 15 i don't remember but it was pretty cheap compared to actually buying like a ticket like every other spectator if that makes sense but yeah i thought that was really cool like i didn't know that and then my friends were like oh it's free to go like go and i was like oh say less and it was so fun and there's tailgates i've never been to a tailgate so i can't really tell you much on it but yeah they exist and if you know the right people they'll probably throw tailgate parties you know on the subject of school spirit i feel like greek life was so actually never mind i just feel like i had so many friends and sororities back home in california and then coming here it was so weird because i was like whoa like i hardly ever see any frats or sorority girlies out and about. I don't know how to explain it, but like it's very obvious when you see one. And here I honestly could not tell you who's in one, but there are houses, which I think is the coolest thing in the whole entire world because it looks like straight out of like a movie set. Like there's those like big houses with like the Greek letters. But again, I literally never see anyone enter them or like any parties at any of them. I don't know. <laughs> like I, I don't think I've ever met a person who was like, I'm in a frat. I wish I saw more activity coming from those houses or just on campus even. So yeah, Greek life at OSU, kind of non-existent. I guess unless you know the right people. So take that as you will. Now, nightlife. I think this might be the last thing I touch on just because I don't want to make this video way too long. But the nightlife here. I'm not gonna lie, Corvallis is a very, very, very small town. It's like a very small town. Meaning you're not gonna have a huge nightlife. There's like obviously no clubs or anything. I mean, there's there's a ton of bars around town. And as I was saying, Monroe is known for being like that college spot where all the college kids like to go to the bars. There's like three really big ones. Um, Downward Dog, Lupe's, Claude's. These bars are notorious for having college students. But there are other bars downtown. That's where like a lot of the young adults slash older adults go to drink and stuff. You can find plenty of college students. It's not like just restricted to the older people, like people who are out of college, like graduated people. I don't know. It's like you, you'll still find like a bunch of college students over there. But if you want like just a college kid scene, then it'd be probably like Monroe would be the spot to hit up. I think that's all I've got to say on that. There are house parties again you just need to know the right people so if you're the type of person who actually likes to go out and explore cities and like have a nightlife put that into consideration because OSU is a very small college town I guess I'm just gonna end with a bit of info on Corvallis on its own I kind of want to see how many people live here let's see the general population so there's about 58,000 people living here is that a lot let me compare it to Portland. 645,000 
in Portland. I put that into comparison to get a general idea of how many people are here. <laughs> I swear you can drive from like one end of Corvallis to the other in 10 minutes. Like it's a very small town, but it's very cute. I think I, I like it because it's so small. There's plenty of things like around here, which I was very happy about. Like grocery stores there's fred meyers winco safeway trader joe's so there's like plenty of things it's not like a desert <laughs> not a desert a deserted area that's what i meant to say there's plenty of shopping there's like tj maxx there's a ross i believe there's ulta there's not really any shopping if that makes sense like a mall like the closest like mall i'd say would be like the woodburn outlets or if you go to eugene there's a mall over there each about like an hour away a uh, fun fact something that really irks me to the core is that the target is like a 20 minute drive and i know that's like not that bad but i just think it's crazy how there's no target in a college town something else about corvallis is that it rains all the time i'm just kidding but not really let me give you a rundown of the weather from what i've learned in a year starting in january january i can't even remember but i think to like april maybe it's just raining like rain every single day sometimes it'll snow like a day or two it doesn't get warm until the summer and then when it does i swear everyone just comes out you'll see people riding their bikes hanging out at the park just being out and about and then after summer kind of towards like fall like when the term is starting in september it gets cold again it gets like pretty chilly and then the rain picks up and then towards like December and then it'll even like snow so this past December it snowed like a lot I think for like a week straight it snowed weather is very wonky prepared to be cold if you're coming from a hot state like me and I guess the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is that seasonal depression is very real <laughs> that transition it's gonna hit you if you're not used to dark cold weather but yeah i think that's gonna be it i feel like there was so much information i had to cover in such little time i hope this information is very helpful to you i do think that i'm going to do a part two but for the part two i do want to answer questions you guys have so make sure to comment them down below so i can answer them in the next video like i said i literally only have this term left so i want to give you guys as much osu content as i can so do expect some days in my life as a college student maybe a week in my life or two in case you want to see more videos i have a playlist up on my channel of just college videos i think i have a few on there so you should check them out if you haven't already make sure to like this video if it feels helpful remember to comment down below any questions subscribe if you haven't already i'm gonna be posting a bunch of college videos like i want to just have a bunch of college videos whether they be vlogs or anything just because it's my last quarter here and i want to film as much as i can of it just for the memories <laughs> So yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching. I post every single Sunday, so I will see you next week. Bye!